All right guys, so you're back with Steph and Dennis. Obviously, it's just me, Dan, here today. And basically what we're gonna be talking about is how I went from $45,000 in student loan debt to today having approximately a $30,000 net worth. Now I know that might not sound too crazy and obviously even for myself, I'm trying to grow that even more. But to put things into perspective, that's about a $75,000 increase, right? Like that's pretty crazy. I went from being negative, literally negative net worth to all of a sudden having 30K and you know, we'll get into all of that and how that's how I got to that and how that split up, but you know, pretty exciting. Anyways, if you're excited to relax, kick back, hear more about my journey, you already know what to do. Make sure you like down below, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. And yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so let's kick things off by doing a little recap on my student loan debt journey. So we do have a full playlist that, you know, I'll link up top somewhere here that you can check out. And, you know, we talk about anything from my actual loans and how I dealt with it, how I was managing the different payments. So keep in mind, if you want more of the details, highly recommend you check that one out after this. So I'm pretty sure my tuition cost was somewhere around $9,000, $10,000, give or take, depending on the year each year that I was in university. And then if we factor in food, living costs, transportation, that sort of thing, um, I finished off with 45,000 outstanding in loans. Anyways, when I think back to that period of time where I was actually finishing school and, go and looking at graduating, I felt this big weight all of a sudden appear because for the most part, as you're in school, you're not really thinking about your debt for, at least that was my experience. I know I've talked to a bunch of people who've had the same experience as well. You're kind of focused on your studies. And then once you know, you're hitting graduation, it's like, whoa, now you got to start paying this off. So what I started to do was actually research what the best ways to pay it off were, you know, what my interest rates were. There's a couple different interest rates. So basically it was like information overload and not really understanding or trying to understand what my best course of action was going to be. Basically those first couple months after you graduate can get pretty expensive, especially when you're trying to get situated, trying to get a job, trying to get a place all of that, right? And what I used was that six month grace period, which is basically this period of time for six months where little to no interest is added up onto your loan. So you can use that time to get situated, which is what I did. I, I used that time to look at my expenses, build out a proper budget, you know, figure out how much I could actually afford from my paycheck to dedicate towards my student loan debt. And I and personally, I wanted to dedicate as much as I could. So I wanted to make sure that I was on my P's and Q's, I was on point when it came down to it. Anyways, I think the pre-calculated plan that my loan provider had me on was like a couple hundred dollars a month. And for me, I was like, why would I, why would I just put the bare minimum? They put you on this 10 year plan, right? Why do I wanna be paying off my debt for 10 years when I could easily pay it off in let's say two years? So I did the math and once I had done my budget, it came back that I could afford to throw in approximately $1,300 each month. And that's exactly what I did. So for the next two and a half years, or you know, around 31 months, if you wanna be exact, I went from October 2018, which is when I started paying them off, to February 2021. That's when I finished and I was all good to go and I was happy and you know, that was that. Okay, so once February of 2021 hit and I actually made that last payment, I felt really great, I felt relieved, but it also didn't really feel real. It kind of felt like I was building up to this moment for years where I kind of held in my breath, but I didn't actually get to release it. It kind of went from, okay, so now I've paid off my debt, but at the same time, I now have a $0 net worth so what's next, like what do I do? You've probably seen this video that we put out at the beginning of the year where I shared my plan for 2021 and moving forward, like my financial plan. And it was kind of stressful as I was building out this plan because I kind of felt like it had to be perfect. I wanted to build, start start on the pathway to be building my net worth and you know making good sound financial decisions as quickly as possible. I think for some people, including friends, when they finished paying off their debt, they kind of went through this period where they were so excited and wanted to celebrate, wanted to go on a trip, wanted to buy, you know, the next best item, right? Wanted to kind of take a break off of this rigorous process that they were in that allowed them to pay off their debt. For me, in my mind, I was like, well, if I go buy something or if I spend money on a trip, keep in mind, I still have zero dollars in my bank account. It's, it's gonna be on a credit card and that's not gonna make me feel any better. Right, but I guess some people argue in their minds, well, I can pay that back now, like, you know, pretty quickly. But for me, it just didn't feel right. So after a month or so of reorganizing my budget and seeing where everything was at, the beautiful thing is that this entire time as I was paying off my debt, I was also getting salary increases at work, right? I was also getting promotions at work. So my income during this time was also increasing higher and higher. So by the time I was done putting that $1,300 a month towards my debt, 
I now had the capacity of putting $850 towards my savings for my emergency fund and a total of $1,500 towards my investments that I make on Quest Trade. So all of this over six months would have gotten me to $14,000, but at the same time, I've also made some money on through NFTs, uh, highly recommend you check out that video up top after this one. My investments have also go gone up in value. During this entire time, I've also been contributing to a defined contribution plan at work that's worth approximately $10,000, which brings me to my total net worth right now of around $30,000, give or take, depending on the investments. Okay, so like I just mentioned, I put 34% of my money towards my savings and then 64% of my money towards my investments. So once again, for me and also for everyone else, I think it's super important that we prioritize putting money aside for our emergency funds. So right now I have about $6,000, you know, give or take, sometimes things happen. We've talked about this before where, you know, you have a dentist appointment, whatever, whatever. Things happen, right? You got to pull money out. So right now I've got about six grand in there. My goal is $10,000 flat, and that's what I'll have for my emergencies should anything happen. And then the rest of my money just goes towards my investing. So once my emergency fund is fully funded and ready to go, the plan is to continue saving some money on the side as well. So for, for those more current investments that we're trying to make. So if you've seen some of our other videos, we, we are super interested in real estate. We do wanna invest in real estate at some point. Overall, especially as my income continues to grow over time, the idea is to maintain my expenses to be as low as possible while still increasing that percentage that I'm dedicating towards my investments, right? That's how you're gonna be able to, you know, not succumb to lifestyle creep and actually grow some wealth over time. Okay, so last up, I think it's super important for us to actually talk about how I plan on growing my net worth, especially over the long term, right? So up to date, there has been some big ticket items that we've been able to cross off the list or check off the list. But I think a really big piece of the pie is gonna be us growing our side hustle, AKA our YouTube channel and everything that comes along with it. So this is something that Steph and I are super passionate about. We wanna continue to share more content on all things money and careers careers especially because that's how you're gonna be able to what? Grow that money. So this means talking about getting a job, making sure that you're getting paid an adequate income, ultimately meaning that you knew how to negotiate in order to get that income, talking about promotions, basically everything that you can't find information on online or anything that we, we you know, as a whole we deem super taboo and aren't willing to talk about, that's what we wanna talk about and share more information on. So with all of that being said, we're very focused on building up this business and ultimately that comes with growing our income as well. They kinda of go hand in hand. In the medium term, you're also gonna see us diving more into real estate. I think that's gonna be something that grows our net worth as well and you're gonna be seeing that more on this channel. Overall, what's next for us is one, making sure that we're focusing on investing and two, that we're building up our business. All right, guys, that's a wrap on this video. I hope that you enjoyed, you know, hearing about my own personal thoughts on basically how I went from thousands of dollars in debt to now thousands of dollars in positive net worth. I'll obviously be updating you guys as I continue to grow my net worth and as things change, you know, things shuffle. But yeah, if you guys have any questions, any comments for me down below, if you have any experiences of your own that you wanna share, drop them down in the comment box below. We'd love to read those. But anyways, if you haven't seen our previous videos on money, investing, our new couch, mm -mm, make sure you check it out next door, door, and we will be back. You know the vibes, let's go.